So thank you very much for coming today in the evening. And today I'll speak on this topic of how our strengths can be our weaknesses and how our weaknesses can be our strengths. So all of us, when we go in our life journey, we all have to struggle. We may have to struggle against uh, our situations, we have to struggle against our own limitations. And while we are struggling in this way, we all look for something that will give us an advantage. So something which will help us become maybe stronger than others or at least stronger than our situations by which we can function. So that in many ways our journey in life is a journey of self discovery. We are trying to understand ourselves so that we can we can use whatever we have to the best capacity. Say for example, if you go to a new city and there you rent a car and you you had asked for a particular model of the car but then that model is not available, you got some other car. Then when you start driving that car, first you feel it out. You know, how does the gear work? How does the engine work? How does the overall car function? Then are the, are the brakes very fast? Is the gear, is the steering very fast? And then as you get a sense of that, then you can operate that car to the optimal capacity. So similarly for all of us, when we come in the world, we have, we are given certain resources. So we have certain strengths and we have certain weaknesses. And the essential challenge in life is how do we, how do we <coughs> leverage, utilize our strengths and how do we manage our weaknesses for achieving that which is worthwhile in our lives. So I'll talk of the contrast between two characters in the Ramayana to illustrate this principle. So I'll talk, take this discussion in three parts. First I'll talk about how strengths can become weaknesses. Then I'll talk about how weaknesses can become strengths. And lastly I'll talk about how strengths and weaknesses can both help us move forward toward life's ultimate purpose. <clears throat> once a group of people, once a marriage counsellor was doing some counselling uh, to some couples. So he said all, all the husbands who are controlled by their wives come on this side, left side. And all the husbands who control their wives come on the right side. So everybody lined up on the left side. Only one person lined on the right side. So when everyone, when this one person lined, so do you really, uh, do you really control your wife? Actually, my wife told me to stand here. <laughs> so often relationships are also it a subtle or a gross way we are trying to gain control we are trying to gain power and amid such situations you know we all try to get some advantage by which we can control whoever is there around us the control itself does not necessarily have to be something negative now it is for what purpose we are trying to control that is also important so when we get some strengths Say, if somebody has strength in terms of they have financial power, somebody has strength in terms of looks, somebody has strength in terms of contacts, somebody has strength in terms of intelligence. So these are all strengths by which we can get a certain amount of control over others. And with these strengths, we all can function effectively. So <clears throat> in the Ramayana, we will discuss the contrast between Ravan and Vibhishan. Now interestingly, Ravan and Vibhishan both were, what was their relationship? Brothers, yes. Who was, who was older among them? Ravan, yes. They were brothers, but what was the difference between them? Thank you. What was the difference between them? 
One was the enemy of Ram, another was the friend of Ram. That happened as the uh, story evolved. But in terms of their personal attributes, yeah. So both were born from the same, same parents, but Ravan tended towards vice and Vibhishan tended towards virtue. So now Ravan was extremely powerful. And not only was he very powerful, he also gained a lot of, uh, he did a lot of tapasya, lot of he did a lot of austerities by which he gained further power. And because of this, whenever he would fight with anyone, he would make, sh he would just crush opponents. There was practically no one who could match him. Now, because on one side he had power, other side he had vice, he had lust, he had greed, he had anger. So the power, he started abusing it. And as he kept abusing the power more and more, he started committing atrocities. He started committing vicious, hurtful activities towards others. Now through this all, we be <coughs> many many traditional societies are hierarchical very hierarchical means say if somebody is the older brother the younger brother generally doesn't speak against the older brother and more so in terms of age ravan was older in terms of power ravan was much more powerful in terms of the royal hierarchy also ravan was the king so, Vibhishan stood by him. Vibhishan stayed by his side, but what Vibhishan did was, whenever Ravan would do anything excessively wrong, Vibhishan would try to give gentle advice. And slowly by that advice, he would make sure that Ravan would not do wish terribly wrong things. But even he didn't have much control. Now, because Ravan had so much power, <coughs> there is confidence. What is the opposite of confidence? What is the opposite of confidence? Oh, good, good. <laughs> it's true. What you're saying is valid. Mm, it is. Actually, if you can say if confidence is here. Uh, when we say opposite, we can say confidence is like a healthy or a steady state. And you could go toward two extremes which are unhealthy as contrasted to confidence. So one unhealthy state will be what you said. That's what? Overconfidence. And the other will be underconfidence or diffidence. So now everybody needs a certain level of confidence. Whatever we are doing in our lives, we need confidence to be able to face what life is sending our way. But when there is when there is overconfidence, what happens is that we overestimate our abilities or we underestimate the challenges. So when there is overconfidence, the difference, key difference between confidence and overconfidence is vigilance. Vigilance means somebody is alert. Somebody who is overconfident, they think there is no problem at all. Any problem, I'll just smash it. Say now the cricket world cup is going on. Now somebody might be a very good batsman and if the opposite team player ball bowling then the batsman has to have confidence about how I, that I, can, I can face these ballers. But if the batsman is not alert or oh, what kind of ball the ball, the baller is bowling and the baller, batsman thinks this is a straight ball but it turns out to be a googly and because of overconfidence, when there is overconfidence then there is no vigilance. One is not observant, one is not alert. So then when there is no vigilance, that overconfidence leads to self-destruction. So somebody might be a very expert, talented, gifted batsman. So their gift batting ability is their strength. But even if somebody has strength, that does not mean that they are omnipotent. Hmm? Just because somebody can do one thing expertly, doesn't mean that they can do everything. Or it also doesn't mean that they can do the same thing in all situations. So they also have to be alert. 
but Ravan because he had so much strength so because he had so much power and nobody could challenge him he became overconfident he became arrogant now sometimes uh, if there is a if somebody has a particular opinion and then we try to tell them you know that this is you know maybe your understanding is not the complete understanding or we try to tell them that their understanding is not correct then some people are so overconfident they say i can agree with you but then both of us will be wrong <laughs> what that means is they are so completely confident that i am right that they are just not ready to entertain any other opinion of anyone else so ravan had that overconfidence and of course so when he abducted sita now at one level he also had that awareness that i am not protected from he had a boon by which he was protected from many kinds of beings but there was one kind of being that he was not protected from which was that manushya human beings now he thought actually human beings are insignificant he say suppose you know if somebody is in a jungle and in the jungle there might be tiger there might be lion there might be elephants somebody may say that okay you know i want to be protected from tigers lions and elephants somebody says you know so if somebody asks you know, i want to be protected from ants what <laughs> ants ants are insignificant so he thought humans were powerless like that he said why do i need the protection from uh, humans i can deal with them myself so when he cast an evil eye on sita at that time he started he because he knew at one level that he did not have protection from humans and he sensed that ram is quite powerful so he decided not to confront ram directly and he used a roundabout conspiratorial conspiratorial way by which he abducted sita and then after that he abducted sita and he brought her to his kingdom which was his kingdom lanka, lanka. now in lanka he thought that this is surrounded by the ocean and nobody can come in over here he knew at one level that he was playing with fire when he angered ram but what happens is demons have their own expectation of how things will work so what happens is he thought now it could be he could have thought in a way that if if i if i abduct sita that will anger ram and then ram will come and attack me is it i am actually courting danger by that but he thought that if i abduct sita ram will never be able to reach me and because he will not reach me and because he is so attached to sita now what was his evidence that he was so attached to sita he said that otherwise he is living in a forest why would he bring his wife with him when unless he is attached to her now he did not have that conception also that but sita might be so committed to him that sita wanted to come with him to the forest mm. so that's why his plan was that if i just abduct sita and get sita with me and then i show her my magnificent palace my huge wealth and that will tempt her and then she will come over to my side and she will surrender to me and because ram is so attached when ram is separated from sita ram will just sink into agony and die because of that so many times when demoniac people make plans they they have a you could say one track imagination that this is how things are so he had no idea of the strength of commitment of sita to ram or the strength of commitment of ram to sita and although he tried to tempt sita sita was not in the least interested in fact what to speak of becoming his queen sita refused to even enter into his palace or stay in his palace she said that because ram was sentenced to exile so just as ram as long as ram is living in exile in the forest i will also live in the forest 
and that's why he had to keep her in the Ashok Vatika, in his favorite gardens. So anyway, the point that happened was that because he was so overconfident, he did not think his plan through, and eventually. Ram came and Ram first sent Hanuman as a messenger. And Hanuman was just a single monkey, but the single monkey devastated almost half of Lanka. He burned half of Lanka and that uh, stunned all his soldiers and he went back. And Ravan was shocked when this happened. And then he started thinking, he called an assembly of war, he said. The, the Lanka which we had considered impregnable, it has been penetrated now. Oh generals, please tell me what we should do now. So he said that actually a wise king always takes advice from his ministers and then he acts. A foolish king acts without consulting others. So please give me your advice. Now his mood was such that he wanted advice, but some people say you are free, you are fully free to express your mind as long as you agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> so he was like that, all his generals were yes men around him. Now, yeah, so it is what happened, he said actually you know this Hanuman is an insignificant monkey. The only reason he was able to burn Lanka was because he caught us by surprise. He, next time when he comes, he will be in for a surprise. Some other general said, actually why wait for them, we will send our army there and we'll, we will wreak vengeance on them right now. And one by one by one, they just uh, spoke to him what he wanted to hear. Now this is, in today's language it is called as living in an echo chamber. So what happens is, echo chamber means we hear, if we are in an echo, ch echo chamber, we just hear what our wise being echoed. So similarly, what happens in many cases is that, uh, nowadays say in social media, if you are on Facebook and we get our news from Facebook, then we congregate, we get it along with people who are like minded. So what happens is, we hear only those people who, who share our opinions. And anybody who doesn't share our opinion, we demonize them, we reject them. So Ravan lived in this kind of echo chamber. And although he was very strong, his strength led to overconfidence. And that's why eventually when Ram came, he was just overpowered. He fought, he fought his full army, but he was overpowered. So strength is, is, is strength is a strength, definitely, but strength can become a weakness if it leads to overconfidence. One of my main services is writing, I have written about 20-25 books. So it's in, uh, it's quite uh, sobering to know that uh, in the last century, um, the, among the top 10 authors who are considered to be the best authors of the last century, many of them are Nobel laureates or their books are considered to be classics, out of these 10, 8 of them committed suicide. And the remaining two, they just went into like manic depressive condition. And this is not just among authors, almost all artists, it tends to happen like that. Now, why does it happen? They are phenomenally talented people. Now, of course, uh, again, this each individual case might has some many specific things. But broadly speaking, what happens is that in any creative endeavor that we try to do, mm -hmm. There are some times when we just work brilliantly. We just work ex with extraordinary brilliance. But then there are some other times when nothing seems to be working. Some days you start writing and then you dig gold. You dig and gold, wherever you dig, gold comes out. Some days you just keep digging, digging and nothing except dirt is found. So what happens is, now sometimes if somebody is a very, very talented person, say, then we, we say, you are a genius. Now if we look at the, best, now, the word genius is an English word and it comes from the Greek, Greek Roman uh, tradition. So if we look at, say, before the scientific revolution, 
that is around the 15th 16th centuries when anybody at that time also there are brilliant artists there are brilliant writers so at that time what the usage was not that you if somebody do do anything brilliantly not that you are a genius but you have a genius now what do you mean by you have a genius their understanding was that whenever anybody does anything brilliant there is some higher being that communes through you and that you have a genius means there is some higher being that is acting through you and because of that higher being acting through you you are able to perform superlatively now of course because the being is acting through you so you deserve respect but it is not just you alone now to take soul credit for our talents is to put too much burden on ourselves to take soul credit for our talents is to put too much burden on ourselves why because even the most talented person sometimes they just they can't perform now say again if you take the example of cricket you know there are some bats when the best batsman might some day just be out of form now nobody wants to be out of form they try to bat to the best of their ability but they just can't bat one day they might be in superlative form and any stroke that they hit it just goes to a boundary but the next day the most straight forward ball they are not able to hit so now of course the players are dedicated the players who perform they are dedicated their commitment is important but there is something beyond us that acts through us and that is when we are able to do something wonderful so in the bhagavad gita krishna says paurusham drushu that i am ability in human beings it is god who acts through us whenever we are able to do anything extraordinary so sometimes some children they might be extremely talented and some children are prodigies uh, there are youtube videos of children who are in diapers and they are playing harmonium you know, how how do you do that how do they learn it this is a superb so when such kids are extraordinarily good there is definitely something special about them but if we start saying that you are a genius the problem with that is that tomorrow something might happen they might not be able to perform at the same caliber and even the best of us sometimes have off days so many of these top writers what would happen is the what happened was that they were able to write superlative literature and they became famous and then after that they started measuring themselves by the standard of that superlative literature and anything that they would write not good enough not good enough see our mind can make us unhappy in the happiest of situations <laughs> by just speaking these three words not good enough <laughs> your house is not good enough your car is not good enough the food is not good enough you know my children are not good enough my partner is not good enough now this is not good enough that is not good enough and now of course we all want to improve but when 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 something divine would act through them and they would be able to do something phenomenal and the next day they are not able to do that next time when they are writing so they become when we take sole credit for our talents then we have to take the sole blame for the absence of the talents and thus they would go into enormous depression why what happened why can't i write like this i wrote so well why is nothing coming out over here and you know anger is expressed in different ways anger expressed <laughs> outward leads to aggression anger expressed in our anger directed outward leads to aggression anger directed inward leads to depression when we become angry with ourselves why are you not good enough why can't you do this then we start sinking into depression so it's important that we don't we recognize our, that our strengths are they are gifts we've been given them and we are grateful that we have them 
now to have abilities is a gift to know that we have abilities is a greater gift some people say that i have many hidden talents <laughs> but the problem is they are hidden even from me <laughs> <laughs> so uh, to to have talents is a gift to know that we to know that we have talents is a greater gift but to know that our talents are a gift is the greatest gift to know that our talents are a gift is the greatest gift so because ravan was demoniac he never thought of any power higher than his he just thought my power is my power and i will use this power for whatever i want however it's for me to abuse it's for me to commit atrocities i i don't care for anything else so when our strengths lead to overconfidence then they become weakness <coughs> now if, if in the, with our children also they, when they do something good when they say come come first in our class they come they top in a competition naturally as parents we will be very proud of them we will be very happy about them and then we'll celebrate and that is good that's natural but if we want to foster intrinsic self esteem so there is intrinsic self esteem and there is extrinsic self esteem extrinsic self esteem is when i achieve something then i am considered someone worthwhile intrinsic self self esteem is whatever i achieve externally i have innate self worth so when we appreciate others when we for example if parents appreciate their children when they achieve something wonderful that's good at least at that time we should appreciate no doubt but if if we appreciate only when they achieve something that leads to extrinsic self worth the children start thinking that only when i achieve something then my parents will appreciate me then my parents will love me if tomorrow i am not able to appreciate if i am not able to achieve this then will my parents still love me will my parents still have the same regard for me and that can lead to a lot of insecurity on the other hand instead of of course we can and should appreciate achieve, achievement but ultimately what is in our hands is commitment now so if we learn to appreciate our children for their commitment so if they study regularly Now, sometimes they may get great marks sometimes they may not get such great marks but they study regularly and then we appreciate them for that commitment then that appreciating for commitment leads to intrinsic self worth because commitment is what is in their hands achievement is not in their hands and <clears throat> if we have also sometimes we ourselves might have self esteem issues that might also be because our self esteem is extrinsically centered maybe we are just trying to win the approval of someone but sometimes that almost in everybody's life there are some people whose approval we desperately crave for and those people they are super stingy <laughs> <laughs> about giving approval they might approve others for some small things and we do a big thing and still they don't appreciate approve they don't appreciate they don't approve and everybody has one or two people like that in their lives so often our own insecurities come because we are basing our self worth on external things of course external things are important but they are not all important so again what is this is the flip side when we think of our strengths as our strengths then when we are not able to act accordingly then we what something is wrong with me yes yeah, something can be wrong with us but it sometimes is nothing wrong with us we tried our best but things didn't work out so our strengths become weaknesses when they lead to overconfidence among us now that was the first point i was going to make any questions or comments till now So now I'll go to the second point. Does anyone remember what the second point I was going to speak? How our weaknesses become strengths. So normally now, nobody wants to be weak. Hmm. <clears throat> That, that's perfectly understandable. 
but you know there's a difference between having weaknesses and being a weakling a weakling is a person who is defined by their weaknesses who self identifies with their weaknesses and thinks that okay my defining characteristic is this weakness it like everybody goes through painful situations in their life sooner or later life victimizes everyone so we may be victimized but we don't have to be victims so life victimizes everyone say in the mahabharat there is the example of karna he was victimized uh, he although is born in royalty but still he was never given the credit of born in being born in royalty and he identified himself as a victim but if you look at it it was not karna alone who was victimized even the pandavas were victimized although the pandavas were born in royalty they became orphans at a very small age and then when they came back to their own home what happened those who were supposed to protect them they were a part of the conspiracy to kill them their uncle was supposed to be like the surrogate father and their uncle was a part of the conspiracy who was their uncle dhritarashtra dhritarashtra he was blind and he remained blind to his son duryodhana's plans to kill so the pandavas they they were royalty but when they were just small children they were small teenagers no they had to they were attempts were made to burn them alive attempts were made to poison them and they had to flee and live in the forest so they could also have complained hey you know why is life so unfair the fact is that life is unfair to everyone sooner or later hmm? and of course if we look at it from the other side just like say sometimes uh, if you again going back to the example of cricket sometimes the batsman may be not out and the umpire gives out <laughs> so we say that's unfair and yes it's unfair but if a say batsman plays for 10 years 15 years there are sometimes when the batsman is not out and the batsman is given out and many times the opposite also happens isn't it what is the opposite yeah the batsman is out but he is not out so like that we can see that sometimes we have made no mistakes and still we get the blame i feel life is so unfair but then we can also think of situations in our life when we made big mistakes but you know we escaped the blame somehow nothing happened because of that so in the overall analysis we can say life evens out but the point i'm making over here is that we all can have weaknesses but we don't have to identify as weaklings yes if we start letting that weakness define us so what do we mean by weaknesses sometimes we might be physically weak sometimes if you want to speak but we might stutter and we are not able to speak so well sometimes uh, we may feel that our looks are deficient sometimes our memory might be some people have outstanding memory and some people have outstandingly poor memory <laughs> just that just just can't remember so we all have weaknesses in fact not just weaknesses all of us have painful inadequacies everyone is limited by the some some inadequacy or the other so now our our weaknesses if we obsess over them that can lead to resentment that can lead to anger <coughs> that can lead to self victimization self pity no so sometimes what happens two people who have self pity what happens they come together and then they have a pity party <laughs> so instead how can I, so how can our weaknesses become strengths our weaknesses can become strengths if our weak we if our weaknesses can foster some humility within us if our weaknesses make us recognize the need to seek the help of others to seek the help of someone stronger than us and ultimately our weaknesses can inspire us can impel us to take shelter of god and that is what happened to vibhishan the vibhishan was very virtuous but in terms of physical power or political power 
he was no match at that time to ravan and he was giving advice repeatedly to ravan and he begged ravan he says if you hold on to sita you will be destroyed just return sita but not only did ravan reject the, uh, his advice ravan started accusing him he says you you know i have treated you so well but still you are viciously motivated against me that's why you are opposed to my happiness and my well being so vibhishan begged to him he said that now vibhishan took out his his crown and he put it on the feet of ravan and he said if you think i am selfishly motivated you know you can reject me you can strip me of all my royal honor but ro but please don't reject my advice if you reject my advice it will cause the destruction of the whole dynasty of rakshasas but ravan was so arrogant he just kicked vibhishan's crown away now at that time vibhishan left the court and he had three options he thought that if i am here right now i can just uh, i can say that this i tried my best but nothing worked so i can just take sanyas i can just go to the himalayas and renounce everything and let whatever is going to happen happen he says but that will be abdication of my responsibility i am a member of the royal family and i have a duty towards the citizens so i cannot just renounce like that then he thought maybe i can organize a rebellion against ravan among the rakshasas because not all rakshasas were vicious he says i can organize them overthrow them overthrow ravan and then hand sita to ram so that this ram's attack on the rakshasas can be avoided and the destruction of lanka can be avoided and he said but no this is because ravan was so powerful even those who opposed him they would be cowed down in fear they would not join the rebellion against him and because ravan or also he had become very he had got a lot of prosperity so he had given lot of prosperity to others also so people would not be impelled to rebel against him so just then he said the only option for me now is let me go to ram and tell ram that not all rakshasas are against you your enmity is not against rakshasas your enmity is only against ravan and those demons who are assisting ravan and that way i will ensure that the entire rakshasa dynasty will not be destroyed now when he came across it was a great risk because if ravan came to know that vibhishan has become a traitor ravan would destroy ravan not only kill him but kill him in horrible ways now there are those people are demonic now they uh, there is uh, there is tragedy and there is evil the tragedy is say if a storm occurs and the house collapses and somebody dies because of that that's a tragedy so if a road accident occurs and a car's brakes fail and the car goes over somebody and that they kill uh, that person gets killed that's a tragedy so tra evil so tragedy causes pain but it just circumstantial it happens evil is where somebody intentionally desires to cause maximum pain maximum pain to someone so somebody wants to kill someone and say they just don't drive a car over their head they drive over a car first over their feet and then the rest of their body again and again and again you know those who are demoniac they can be horrible when hitler was tyrannizing the whole of europe and soon it became clear even to germans that we can't win this war so then they wanted to stop hitler so two three of hitler's assistants uh, uh they they conspired they made a plan against him and they tried to assassinate him but somehow that plan failed and when hitler came to know about it hitler was so brutal that 
all those who had turned against him normally say at that time if somebody is to be executed you might hang them so normally when you hang you hang by a rope and then the person's neck uh, what do you say this you get choked so he hung them by you could say plastic bands and what happened by that like it took 11 days for the neck to get cut so 11 days they were in horrible pain so the, so it's so this is this is not just tragedy this is evil evil is where somebody consciously causes enormous pain to someone else knowingly so this is a horrible topic even to discuss but the point i'm talking about here is that ravan was that kind of person and if ravan came to know that vibhishan has turned against me then and if ravan were somehow able to catch vibhishan then he would have done that he would have caused untold pain to vibhishan so not only was he uh, risking the anger of vibhi of ravan but he was also he didn't know whether ram would accept him or not because after all he was a rakshasa but he took that risk and he took that risk ram just observed him and ram could see his heart and ram accepted him and ram told him, and then the, some of the vanaras said you know we don't know he's a demon he might not he might have some ulterior motives so at that time ram spoke, spoke a famous verse sakrud eva prapannoyam tavasmiti yachate abhayam sarvada tasmai tadamye tadvratam mama he says vratam mama this is my wow what is it that even if once somebody surrenders to me say oh lord i am yours this i will grant them fearlessness forever and that time ram says that even if ravan comes and surrenders i will grant shelter even to ravan and then not only does he accept vibhishan but imme- immediately he asks uh, the vanaras to get some water from the ocean and he sang with that sanctified water mantra, mantra with the water sanctified through mantras he coronates vibhishan as the king of lanka now when ravan hears this ravan is outraged he is shocked he isn't sometimes what happens we are surprised about something unexpected happening sometimes we are so surprised that we just become completely thoughtless what to do so this is that kind of shock he says i'm the king and somebody is already enthroned as the king <laughs> it like say if there is a political elections and even before the election has started somebody says i am the prime minister <laughs> what <laughs> so rajas ravan now this actually indicated ram's confidence but it is also a way of sending a message to uh, ravan a uh, bad uh, ravan just try to minimize and dismiss he says what is the use of this coronation he says one beggar has enthroned another beggar as a king it's useless so he didn't he didn't take it very seriously but then after that one of the vanaras he said that you know you said that if ravan comes and surrenders then ravan you said that you will forgive ravan but he says now you have promised vibhishan that you will give lanka to him if ravan comes now what will you do if ravan surrenders now so ram what does he say ram says i'll give ayodhya to him so the dhammi etad vartam mama the point over here is that vibhishan recognized his weakness but rather than wallowing in his weakness feeling sorry for himself what did he do he connected with the supremely strong being and that alliance with ram became his greatest strength and many times it is our weakness it is in the weakest moments that we turn towards god it is at that time when we feel the need of someone bigger than ours to have an active role in our lives so if our weaknesses can bring humility within us if our weaknesses can help us to 
connect with others to seek others help and ultimately seek krishna's seek the lord's help then those weaknesses can become our strengths <clears throat> now generally in our in our life when we want to when you want to form a relationship with someone now if somebody is a very impressive person we are attracted by that no doubt but generally when we when do we become close to someone is when they when they admit their vulnerabilities generally when we are interacting with people we all have our shields above because we don't want to be hurt hmm? so we we conceal our weaknesses we put on a facade and to some extent for functional purposes in the world it's required but if you want to come close to someone if somebody shares the painful experiences from their life if somebody shares their weaknesses their shortcomings their difficulties then what happens is they are lowering their guard and that is when we feel in, we see not just their greatness but we also see their humanness and that's what brings us closer to each other so what happens sometimes if we just keep our guards then the relationships can never go very close to each other so our weaknesses if we don't try to conceal them but we try to be in the right forum with the right people we 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 admit our weaknesses our vulnerabilities not that we hold on to them but then we seek help to deal with them then our weaknesses admitting our weaknesses can actually make us stronger because it can connect us better with others you know when this uh, this whole series of superheroes started there is spider man there is superman there is batman all these uh, now there is of course not just man there is wonder woman and so many others <laughs> <laughs> so when all these started see initially what happened was that this this sort of movie started and then they started making superman more and more and more powerful so initially superman could fly in the sky but then after that superman had enough power that even if a even if a meteorite came and to hit earth just catch it and throw it away <laughs> and once the superman became like god <coughs> then superman's popularity started going down why because if there is no weakness if you can do anything and everything then there is no adventure left in it isn't it so the adventure is there when we have some characters may have some extraordinary strengths but they also have limitations and within those limitations they tap some strengths and do something special mm -hmm. so <clears throat> what happens is that it's our it's weaknesses not not that if if somebody is a weakling they are not very not at all attracted to anyone but somebody who admits their weaknesses and deals with those weaknesses or finds a way to move forward in spite of those weaknesses that is what is very endearing now there are some people who are impressive and there are some people who are inspiring impressive is wow you are so great inspiring is oh you are so great i can also become great like that so in those who are impressive simply causes admiration but those who are inspiring they ins they causes to transform ourselves to improve ourselves so our weaknesses don't have to make us a weakling vibhishan was weaker than ravan but he was no weakling because he connected with ram he became stronger than ravan also so for all of us we can we all have weaknesses and sometimes we may uh, we may feel those weaknesses in a very painful way because others might be better than us and others might get better things than us because of our weaknesses but if rather than obsessing over those weaknesses we use those weaknesses as impetuses to connect connect with others and connect ultimately with krishna then those weaknesses can be the channels by which those connections become stronger ultimately our devotion can become stronger so our weaknesses can become strengths if they increase our humil humility they lead to the um, admission of our humanity and they help us connect with others and with the lord and the last point this is the second point was that we talk our weaknesses can become strengths and last point is more a summary of what i spoke that weaknesses and strengths 
how can we take all of how can we take both of them together it requires courage to accept our weaknesses and it also requires to courage to accept ourselves with our weaknesses the courage to accept our weaknesses is you know okay i can't do this i can't do this that requires courage but if i can't do this if i can take that forward say i'm useless now then it requires courage to accept ourselves with our weaknesses yes i have these weaknesses but still i am a part of god there is a spark of divinity within me and therefore i have intrinsic self worth so what the bhagavad gita tells us and what the bhakti literature in general tell us that each one of us is an inalienable part of god each one of us is precious in the eyes of god and god cares for us not because of what we do for him he cares for us or, or not it is it is not that he stops caring for us if we do something wrong he cares for us simply because of who he is and who we are at our core so because if we can raise our vision above this world towards god then that can give us a sublime sense of inner security because we that is one anchor in our life which will never shake no storm in the world has the power to shake the anchor of god he is the unchanging north pole in our life he can always show us direction and the stronger we connect with him there is there is a storm and we are being battered by the storm that is the anchor that is not shaking but what we need to do is we need to hold on to that anchor and bhakti yoga is a time honored process of tightening our hold on the anchor of god bhakti yoga is not just about doing some religious rituals maybe go to a temple go to some uh, go to do some rituals do some puja Now, all these are okay but all these are meant for a purpose the purpose is to strengthen our inner connection with god to strengthen our hold on the one unshakable anchor in our life so if we understand that our strengths are gifts from god then even while using our strengths we can be conscious and grateful to god as yes, by god's grace i have been given some strengths so let me use the strengths in a mood of service in a mood of contribution then those strengths will not we will have confidence but those strengths won't lead to arrogance it won't lead to overconfidence because we understand that these these strengths which i have are gifts and sometimes when those strengths don't manifest through us we have talents but say we are you could say out of form at that time we still continue doing our best in a mood of devotion that when that magical thing manifests to me i'll do something i may do something extraordinary when it doesn't i still do something ordinary but but that doesn't make me insignificant because we don't let ourselves be defined by the results that we get in the world we define ourselves by our connection with god if we define ourselves by the results when the results don't come we'll be devastated but if we define ourselves by our connection with god and by the contribution that we can made make in connection with him then we our strengths whether they manifest through us or they don't manifest through us we will be able to move forward in our life so some days we'll be able to do wonderful things by the higher strengths manifesting through us some days we may not be able to do wonderful things but still by our commitment we'll be able to do something worthwhile and as far as our weaknesses now we can see our weaknesses also as opportunities to that make us turn towards god the how because our weaknesses remind us that we are finite beings we are limited beings our weaknesses remind us that we are not god that we are not supreme and in that way if our weaknesses remind us of the need of connecting with someone higher then those weaknesses can also become our strengths and over a period of time we will each one of us learn how best to manage our weaknesses 
some weaknesses by our persistent practice we will be able to overcome them and we become strong in them some weaknesses we will learn to live with them this is how it is but i can still move on in my life and <coughs> either way whether we are able to overcome the weaknesses or we have to live with the weaknesses if we let ourselves be defined by our connection with the with god that we understand i am a part of god then those weaknesses may may limit us from doing specific things but the weaknesses won't limit us in our onward flow in life we will if, if say if i conclude with this metaphor that say if we consider our consciousness and our life to be like a river which is flowing towards the ocean and that ocean is god then there are different channels by which this water can flow so we all have different roles in our life we may have a role i am a i am a parent i am a spouse i am a i am a son or a daughter of someone i am a professional i am a this and that we all have different roles we have different responsibilities we have different talents for doing those roles i am a artist i am a speaker i am a cook whatever now all these are like channels through which the water of our consciousness is meant to flow towards god and if we define ourselves by one thing if my defining identity is that say i define myself solely as a parent and if my child starts going along uh, some wrong track then i'll start thinking my life itself is useless now it's not like that a children also growing we are also growing everybody matures uh, there was a american author who said that when i was 15 my father was a fool now i am 25 and i am amazed how much the old guy has learned in the last 10 years <laughs> <laughs> so it just happens that as people grow they also that it's not that the father learned in 10 years the father may also learn but rather the child who is at 15 or is at 25 their perspective also changes so sometimes we overreact and we take other, take others actions too personally we take life's failures too personally but if you understand this is one channel and this presently this channel is blocked but it's blocked still let the water of my consciousness flow to other channels and if we keep our consciousness flowing in this way then even if we may have to live with some pain in our life because in each block channel it will cause us some pain any weakness it will cause us some pain we may have to live with pain but we don't have to live in pain that pain will be a part of our life but pain won't consume our life we have other channels through which we keep moving forward and gradually we'll find that not only will that pain end but that pain will stimulate our growth pain will help us to understand ourselves better and to grow better grow more in our lives and ultimately if we stay connected with god we will discover that life can hurt us in many ways but greater than life's power to hurt is god's power to heal greater than life's power to hurt is god's power to heal if we stay connected with god then we we'll let god uh, give us that experience give us that conviction and that conviction will be our greatest asset in this life and beyond this life so i'll summarize i spoke today on this topic of confidence over confidence and diffidence so when strengths become weaknesses and when weaknesses become strengths So I started by talking about life is like a struggle in which we are all trying to get some power. So we want to discover our strengths, and <clears throat> even in relationships, we try to want we want some strength so that we can man- move forward in this. But if those strengths lead us to overconfidence or arrogance, then that strength can become weakness because we are good at doing one thing. If we think I can always do it or I can do everything, then we lose. We stop. having exercising vigilance and conf- over con- when our confidence has is without vigilance it leads to our confidence so i talked about how ravan he was so powerful 
and he got further power by his boons that he started becoming dismissive of the power of everyone else and thus he courted danger and eventually disaster although others warned him he neglected vibhishan's warning although hanuman demonstrated to him the power of one servant of ram in devastating his entire defenses but he just dismissed it they caught he caught us by surprise and he lived in his own echo chamber and thus he his strength became the cause of his downfall his strength became his weakness then i talked about how our weaknesses can become our so there also i talked about how many uh, creative people authors and others they become suicidal or they become manically depressed that's because today's idea is that if somebody is very talented we say you are a genius but the more appropriate when you have a genius that means some higher talent or higher source of the talent is manifesting through you we are grateful when it manifests the, to the extent we take sole credit for our successes to that extent we will have to take the sole blame for our failures and when we want to when we want to guide our children if we appreciate them only for the achievements that leads to extrinsic self esteem but when we appreciate them for their commitment that leads to intrinsic self esteem and <clears throat> then i talked about how our weaknesses can become our strengths everybody is victimized in life sometime or other but if we let the victimization define us we become victims in the mahabharat karna let that victimization define him the pandavas are also victimized but they never let themselves be identified as victims so we have weaknesses we all have weaknesses but we don't have to be weaklings and our weaknesses can become strengths if they foster humility within us if they remind us of our hum humanity and help and make us seek connections with others okay. even with other people we might impress others by showing how strong we are but it's only when we admit our vulnerabilities then people see our humanity and then we come closer to each other and it is admitting our weaknesses our vulnerability that's what actually ultimately inspires us to take shelter of god so i talked about how vibhishan was weaker than ravan but that his very weakness inspired him to take shelter of ram and by that connection with ram he was able to overcome not only ravan but he was able to do his royal duty of protecting all the citizens of lanka who were not on not actively helping abetting ravan in his ev evil designs and that i talked about the difference between evil and tragedy evil is malevolently intentionally causing an extra pain to people and then i talked about how our strengths if we are conscious that they are gifts to have gifts is is fortunate to know that our to have talents is is fortunate to know that our talents are gifts Uh, is uh, to know that to have talents is uh, is fortunate to know that we have talents is more fortunate to know that our talents are gifts is most fortunate so if we can if our strengths if when we use exercising our strengths we remember that these are gifts from god then our strengths can also take us towards god and if our weaknesses they inspire us to call out to god then our weaknesses can also push can, can also be agents it help us to impel us to connect with him and in that way if we consider our consciousness like a channel or like a water flowing towards the ocean of towards the ocean of god then our strengths are like those channels which are widely open and our weaknesses are like the channels which are very closed which are very narrow or almost closed so even if something is blocked we don't obsess over it that blockage will cause pain we have to live with pain but you don't have to live in pain and through you leveraging our strengths if we keep our consciousness flowing toward god then even if life hurts us if we stay stay connected with god he is like the unshakable anchor by connecting with him through the practice of bhakti we can get strength even amidst life's greatest storms and then oh by holding on to god we will discover that greater than life's power to hurt is god's power to heal thank you very much hare krishna hare krishna so any questions or comments
ये समझ यू मेंशन दैट रावण इज सो डिमोनियक इन वन ऑफ द प्रीचिंग प्रोग्राम आई वाज आस्क अ क्वेश्चन हु इज मोर डिमोनियक हिरण्यकश्यप और रावण आई डिडंट नो व्हाट टू आस्क ओके हु इज मोर डिमोनियक हिरण्यकश्यप और रावण वेल देयर इज नो डिमोनियकनेस मेजरिंग मीटर फॉर कंपेरिंग हु इज मोर डिमोनियक इन जनरल वॉट वी सी इज दैट आवर गुडनेस और आवर बैडनेस इज सीन थ्रू आर एक्शंस बट इज ऑल्सो सीन थ्रू द एक्शंस दैट वी डू इन पर्टिकुलर सिचुएशंस say if somebody asks us please give me a glass of water say go and take it yourself <laughs> may say that's that's rudeness hmm that's bad but if somebody is in a hospital bed and they can't move and they say please give me a glass of water and we say get it yourself <laughs> you know that is not just rudeness that is cruelness you know that is much much worse hmm? so that means the, uh, how bad an action is is determined not just by the content of the action but also by the context of the action so if we consider that way hiranyakashipu he consciously knowingly turned against his own son and he tried to kill his own son which was very brutal now ravan as far as we know if he had got an opportunity he would have killed vibhishan also but he didn't do that directly of course it is said that shurpanaka had a shurpanaka was married her husband was dushta buddhi <laughs> <laughs> dushta buddhi and this is his her husband was started becoming very powerful hmm? so then ravan sent him with a army to fight against some devtas and then he told the whole army secret secretly to withdraw so that dushtabuddhi was left to fight alone and dushtabuddhi was killed so when shurpanaka came to know about it she went mad after that initially was she was mad because she had become a widow but afterward when she came to know her own brother had killed that caused the death of her husband she just went so crazy that she decided somehow or other i have to get back at ravana and that's why she tried to she seductively describes sita's beauty so that ravan would try to abduct sita and then ram would come and destroy her so you could say that uh, ravan also killed a family member but still that is you know killing a brother in law or causing the death of a brother in law is quite different from directly trying to kill one's own son so in that context you could say that hiranyakashipu is more demoniac than ravan Uh, another way of looking at it could be that hiranyakashipu never tried to abduct the the goddess of fortune ravan tried to do that and it was only because of a curse that ravan was stopped ravan could not physically violate sita but he was demoniac so i would say if we use different parameters we could say that uh, we could say that say in this in the context of trying to assassinate his own son hiranyakashipu is more demoniac but in terms of trying to directly abduct the lord's consort we can say ravan is more demoniac okay thank you yes ram can you talk about the uh, you got a weakness and you need to show your humility and have connection with the god other people tend to take advantage of that weakness okay yeah i think yeah that's true so if we show our weakness then won't other people take advantage of it yes of course that's why i said carefully in the right, with the with the right person with the right person see we all have different kinds of relationship with different people i was talking only in the context that if we want to develop a close relationship with someone and while trying to develop a close relationship if we just keep a facade then you know i am so good i am invulnerable i am this yes it's true but then if you want to develop close relationship there are times when we need to admit our weaknesses also we need to admit our wounds so if a warrior 
when that warrior is fighting even if the warrior is wounded the warrior will conceal the wounds so that they can keep fighting because if the opponent understand that you are wounded the opponent will attack with greater vigor so on the war field the warrior needs to as much as possible conceal the wounds so that they can fight whole heartedly and they can keep the enemy from not getting a extra extra advantage or extra fillip but when they come back you know that they, they have to admit their wounds if somebody is nursing them somebody is going to heal them they have to admit their wounds over there so even if they are very powerful they have to admit the weakness at that so at that time so similarly if if we are in a confrontational we are situated in a confrontational role with someone at that time it's not appropriate to admit our weaknesses at that time we have to put a best to best foot forward so humility does not mean admitting our weaknesses alone is not humility humility essentially means that we don't let our ego come in the way of our purpose and if this is important for me i will do it even if i am criticized for this even if the world disapproves but still i'll do that so that's that's humility we we don't let our ego come in the way of our purpose but practically it's not that anywhere and everywhere we should admit our weaknesses it's a if we have to do a particular job then uh, we have to tell at that time what are our credentials for that job now we might have some uh, some disqualifications which may also need to be told at the appropriate time if it is required say if you are if you are applying for a job and you fill your cv and the cv you tell all the things that you don't know <laughs> i don't know french i don't know german i don't know eco i don't know economics i don't know this i don't know say get lost is it <laughs> you have to tell what you know but along with that if you have to do a specific thing which you are not able to do then at appropriate time we need to admit a weakness is answer your question thank you any other questions what happened so thank you very much shri prabhupada ki gaur bhakt vrind ki hidai gaur prema anande hari hari bol